There's the satellite imagery this afternoon. In the lower left, you can see Hurricane Hillary, Category 4 storm, west of Mexico heading for California. And in the central U.S., some filaments of wildfire smoke coming out of Canada. Yellowknife in the Northwest Territory is under a mandatory evacuation order today. And you can see how the cars lined up one road out of town and hundreds of miles to safety in Alberta. And Twitter, unfortunately, has a lot of politics and people pushing agendas, that kind of thing. But there are some interesting photos out of there and that covers some of the tragedy. Yeah, getting a, a lot of ads here on Twitter. It's hard to actually find the information in between all these advertisements. Anyway, the climate indicators, nothing really significant here. The Madden-Julian Oscillation is edging a little bit into Phase 8 and should head into Phase 1 by next week. A quick look at the night sky right around dusk out to the west. The crescent moon starting to appear. Mars just below that, very low on the horizon. And at the very top of the sky, at the zenith, we find Lyra with the bright star Vega. Definitely a fixture in the summer sky. There's the surface analysis for this Friday afternoon. High pressure across Illinois, bringing a fresh incursion of cold air into the Midwest and the northeastern states. Big Rig Steve is on the road in northwestern Indiana, and if you look at that sky, it looks smoky and hazy. If you look at the horizon, it's not really all that restricted. Let's take a look at the surface plots. He's going to be roughly in this area. There's Chicago up to the top left of the map, and you can see the visibilities are running about 10 miles, so fairly unrestricted. So a lot of the smoke is actually aloft, up at about 10 to 20,000 feet. And that high pressure area is bringing northwesterly winds and cooler weather and lower dew points. The leading edge of that air mass from North Carolina through Memphis and Little Rock, and you can see the temperature difference from Fort Smith and Little Rock up towards the Ozarks, where it's close to 80 degrees. Down south, storms in Florida, out towards the Gulf, very wet pattern out there, so I guess it's good they're getting some of that beneficial rain. Old frontal boundary through the Gulf, and moving out to Texas, we pick up those 100s once again, 105 at DFW at this hour, 100 at Ardmore, and 100 at, uh, I guess it would be Johnson City, I'm pretty sure that's not Austin. Out to the west, we can see the first signs of Hurricane Hillary as it marches northward towards California. We'll cover that shortly. Cool air coming into Seattle and Portland, so some relief from that heat wave. But we do have red flag advisories from Washington and Oregon all the way into Montana. That cold air mass extends up into Alberta and British Columbia and heading up into Alaska. Westerly flow, they're in between this large oceanic high and lower pressure up there off the north slope and kind of a rainy pattern. Definitely has cooled down in that region. And out there in Yellowknife, where they've got the evacuations going on, some of the heavier smoke is out there on the south side of this lake. Smoke extending all the way down into Alberta and Saskatchewan. As far as the smoke itself, very hard to pick that out because it's covered by a lot of high clouds. So this may be kind of incomplete. And there's that frontal system there in the Canadian prairies. And about the only hot weather they have in Canada is in Saskatchewan, where we have 90s and maybe as high as 95. All right. So let's head into the forecast graphics. Oh, yeah, we need to make our obligatory stop in the tropics because things are busy. There's a look at the NHC seven-day forecast. So we are heading into a busy period. And of course, in the eastern Pacific, we've got Hurricane Hillary, 125 knots. That's a mid-range category four and 939 millibars on that center. 
There's the official NHC forecast, Category 4 storm for the rest of the day. Then we see a gradual weakening as the storm moves across the cooler waters. By tomorrow, we're looking at a maybe a Category 2 to Category 3 storm and just a continuation of that weakening by the time it gets to Tijuana and San Diego, probably a tropical storm. There's a look at the GFS forecast for Hurricane Hillary. The GFS has done pretty well with the storm. The bold lines that you see here, those are going to be the deterministic forecasts. The thinner lines are going to be the latest ensemble members. And you can see pretty good grouping there. The historical tracks running basically from San Diego out towards the Channel Islands. And the ensembles have stretched all the way from Yuma out to well offshore. But we're looking at the tightest maybe half of those ensemble members, and that pretty much puts us in this ballpark right here. So anywhere from the coastal range out towards one of these. Uh, and yeah, I've got to look at a map here. Santa Catalina Island right there and San Clemente Island. So very likely at this stage, the track is going to fall kind of in between there somewhere. So that's pretty much right on with wet the National Hurricane Center has for its official forecast. All right, so here's a good graphic showing you the approach of Hillary. This is the NAM, which is pretty much in line with the GFS. And you can see it coming up from the south right there along the Mexican coast. And we're looking at Sunday evening. So this will be mostly a Sunday afternoon, a Sunday evening event. You can see there by midnight, rapidly moving into the deserts, up there into Nevada, and bringing in the westerly flow in its wake. Let's take a closer look at that. Yeah, I thought you would like this. This is a much closer look. You've got San Diego right there, Los Angeles, and the San Joaquin Valley up to the north. So we start out around 5 a.m. on Sunday. Things rapidly going downhill, starting to get the spiral bands into Los Angeles and San Diego. The winds, these are going to be sustained winds, only about 10 knots, starting to pick up during the day there. And by 2 p.m., getting sustained winds up to about 35 knots around San Diego and about 20 around Los Angeles. Most of the stronger winds are going to be on the east side where the forward motion of the storm combines with the wind field around the storm itself. The heavier impacts probably around 5 p.m. there. You can see most of these plots are around 30 knots, so not terribly strong, but plenty of rain, and it arcs completely around the storm, and then starting to improve rapidly by about 9 to 10 p.m. And one more for you. Let's take a look at the gusts. All right, so these are the gusts. So that's the highest wind speed recorded in a given minute. So there it is, 35 to 40 knots as the storm comes across. And it looks like around 5 p.m., some of the passes and higher elevations, possibly up to 50, maybe 60 knots, maybe even higher in a few spots. And out there to the north of Los Angeles, looks like about 40 to 45 knot gusts and rapidly diminishing as the storm moves by up to the north. And I should point out that there's a lot subject to change between now and Sunday, and those are not true mesoscale models, so they're not capturing a lot of the important processes near the ground. There could be locally stronger gusts in some areas. And of course, the whole scenario may differ. Anyway, let's look at the tropics. We've got the intertropical convergence zone from Venezuela, up to the coast of Senegal. And getting more active, there's a closed circulation right there. Another one, and possibly another one right there. And out there in Cuba and Haiti, we've got one wave, one tropical wave moving westward, and that will have impacts in the Gulf coming up early next week. And let's bring that forward. These waves march westward, one strong wave across the Leeward Islands, and this one here closing off, but not very strong. And down there in the Keys, yeah, out there in the western or eastern Gulf, late Sunday, 
pretty strong wave coming together. And this green and orange, that's going to be the precipitation field. And yeah, quite a lot of precip extending from this other wave in the Leeward Islands. Let's take that into next week. Possible tropical depression or tropical disturbance there coming on the far south Texas coast. This one strengthening near Puerto Rico and another and another. So we're seeing a much different pattern from what we had last week. Things were very quiet in this run-up to mid-August. And the only big storm the GFS throwing at us right now is actually brewing off of Nicaragua. Watch that area as it lifts northward across Cuba. Now this is very far out. This is late next week. So very likely this is going to change significantly. But it does show that we have a credible chance of some tropical weather on the U.S. coast. Maybe late next week into the weekend. And we'll check back on that on Monday. And here's a look at that chart showing detrimental areas for tropical cyclone formation. We've got the brown, which is very dry air in the mid-levels. That can be from the Saharan air layer. It can be from subsidence from that subtropical high across the Atlantic. And we've also got the blue, which is going to be shear. That's detrimental to tropical cyclone formation. So across the Caribbean, kind of a sheared environment. But as we go into later next week, that shear begins to subside a bit. And then we start seeing that tropical cyclone start to form around Thursday. And there it is, lifting northward. Right there through that clear area. Good conditions, high sea surface temperatures. So there's definitely some potential out there in the Caribbean and Gulf of Mexico next week. But there it is. Around Saturday, you can see some dry air. So that will pose a problem for this tropical cyclone as it moves north. Okay, so let's take a look at the short-term forecast. That polar high across the Midwest continues to sink southeastward. Strong return flow out to the west of that on the plains, bringing up that moisture. And with that lack of change in the weather patterns, continued hot. And I should show you that upper level ridge. Yeah, there it is. That's what we have right now. 595, 596 decameter high across the south central U.S. And it continues to strengthen as we go into Sunday. There's the 600 decameter contour. The hottest place in the country Sunday will be Wichita Falls, which will be up to 110 degrees. As we go into Monday, that high settles in across Kansas, Missouri, Iowa, Nebraska. The hottest place in the U.S., that's going to be Salina, Kansas. They're expecting to be 110 degrees. The hottest place in the country, Kansas. And that's because the southwest has been wiped out by Hurricane Hillary, bringing those temperatures down into the 70s and 80s, even in Death Valley. For Wednesday, a cool down for the northeast. You can see that northwesterly flow through there. But continued hot in the central U.S., so once again, for Wednesday, the hottest place in the country, well, that's going to be Louisiana, probably, near 108 around Shreveport, Nachitoches, and that will continue into Thursday. So yeah, that's going to be some very ugly weather. Let's take this into motion for tomorrow. Going into the evening, that's going to be about 5 p.m. Central, 8 p.m. Eastern, little high nosing into the Dakotas, but that's going to be short-lived for that part of the country because that heat's going to come back for Nebraska and Iowa. And there comes Hillary out of the Baja California area, making its track up there towards California and crossing Nevada, bringing some unusual heavy rains from the Mojave Desert up to the Great Basin area. And of course, I worked at the Tonopah Test Range, never saw anything like this in August. Of course, I was probably not there during an active year, but these tropical cyclones, they're very rare, but they do happen maybe every 15 to 20 years. Anyway, that moisture will continue lifting north to the northern Rockies, heading up towards Montana, Idaho for Monday and Tuesday, and you're going to see it arc around into Canada and into the Great Lakes and northeastern U.S. So they will be the beneficiaries of some of that moisture, and out here in the Great Plains, we will just be roasting. 
the endless heat wave of summer 2023. So I hope you found some of that interesting. I'm going to leave you with some footage taken by Greg here in the Texas Hill Country. Hope you have a great weekend, and we'll see you back here on Monday for the supporters and Wednesday for everybody else. Take care. Bye-bye.